There we go. Now we're live. All right, so review. Let's take a look at it. So first of all, this is a perpendicular bisector. Shh, boy, stop talking. This is a perpendicular bisector. So what happens is if this side is equal to this side, we just set them equal. So we go, okay, 9x plus 1, this is number 1, equals 7x plus 13, right? And I'm just going to solve. Get rid of the smallest of the two x's, minus 7x, minus 7x, right? Am I going too fast? If I get going too fast, tell me to slow down. I get a 2x plus 1 equals 13, right? Yep, yep. Minus 1, minus 1. 2x equals 12. Divide by 2, divide by 2. And Luke's right. x equals 6, okay? Now, that's only half the answer. Because it says find x. Well, x is equal to 6. We got that. x equals 6. But it also says find bc. So if I want to find bc, oh, I really said bc, huh? Uh, I meant to say, oh, I found a mistake. I'm, I'm glad we're going through this. I meant to say dc, not bc, because you can't find bc. But you can find dc, so change that to dc. So it would be 7 times 6 plus 13, right? Because I plugged the 6 in for x. 42 plus 13 makes a 55. Huh, I found my mistake. I'm going to fix that brand new book, brand new material. So oh, I'm bad to make a mistake here now. I'll fix that for later. Okay, does that make sense, everybody? Ben. And then isn't BC 22.5? 25 is 0.5. We don't know. We don't know. But what about the third thing? Well, we, if we... Yeah, yeah. If we had some more information, we could find it with Pythagorean's theorem, but we don't have more information, okay? All right. Number two. Okay, let's take a look at number two. All right. So, if, uh, if this is equal to this, then it has to be boys. Maybe you guys want to go outside and work on this on your own. Okay, well then, so let's set them equal. Let's go 7x equals a 3x plus 16. I'll move my book up so I can see my work, right? Minus 3x, minus 3x, I have a 4x equals 16, right? Divide by 4, divide by 4. I'm glad you're in front of me because this way I can pace myself. Thanks, Gavin. No, because I don't want to get going any faster than anybody else, right? Okay. So then I'll divide by 4, right? Divide by 4. So if x equals 4, great. Let's go ahead and answer the rest of the question. So there's one answer, x equals 4, right? So if I go back to x equals 4 here, and I want to find the value of angle, that's that m means measure. This m means measure of angle kjl. kjl, so I put the 4 in here. 7 times 4 is 28 degrees, okay? That makes sense? Oh, I see. This little m means measure of. Don't let this freak out. I thought, I thought the 7x seven, seven was the length, but that's the angle. That's the angle, yeah. And so each side is 28. No, not the side. The, the angle. Oh, so the angles are. The angles are 28. Okay. Well, right, so I am just looking at the side. No, that's okay. Um, the angle is 28. Number three, we're going to construct the orthosquare. Orthosquare. Okay. Orthosquare. 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 So let's see if I can get it graphed perfectly. And I want the ortho center, right? Now, if I'm not sure what an ortho center is, I look to the board because it's all right there. And the ortho center. Sorry, you have to find 90 degrees. Right. So I'm looking for altitudes, which is 90 degrees. Totally right. So um, I'm going to go to negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1. There's A. Negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Four, there's B, 1, 2, 3, negative 1, there's C. So we draw my triangle, okay? All right, there we go. So what I need is the orthocenter, right? So if I'm looking for the orthocenter, and if I'm not sure what an orthocenter is, and, and me too, I forget these things, and that's why I put them on the board. So if I look for the orthocenter, there it is. It says altitude. So Josiah was right. We're going to go 90 degrees from the angle. So let's see. 
What I'm going to do then is draw in. The first altitude is actually pretty easy. That one's straight down from B, right? Okay. There's one. Now the other altitudes. Now it's got to be perpendicular. So from A, now listen carefully. The slope of this line is down one over one, down one over one. So the slope of its perpendicular line would be just the opposite. Up one over one, up one over one, up one over one. Okay, so in order for two lines to be perpendicular or to be at 90 degrees, their slopes must be opposite, right? The slope of this line seems to be down two over one, down two over one, so I'm gonna do just the opposite, but I kinda have it already. Seems like it's gonna be right about there. So I get all of my altitudes to intersect in a single point is at negative 2, 2. Okay, that's the orthocenter, which really doesn't give us anything. Um, it doesn't give us the center of the triangle. It doesn't divide it up into anything special. It's just a point. That's all, okay? If it's an obtuse triangle, then it is outside of the triangle, okay? How am I doing? Thumbs up? Yeah, let me get out of the way. Sorry, Luke. Okay. And I'll wait for you to catch up. I don't want to get going too fast. Just say what? Huh? The part at the bottom. No. Yeah, that oh, it's upside down. Okay. Yeah, I just turned my. No, I turned my notebook upside down so you guys so I, I could put it on the overhead. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you ready? You almost got it. I'll wait for you. Okay. Okay. Tell me when you're ready. Okay, well, there you go. Four. All right, number four. On four, we're going to need to find the circumcenter. So let's graph it first, okay? Um, graph it first. Get my ruler. Make my x, y axis, right? There we go. And there we go. So if I want the circumcenter, I've got M at 0, 3, 0, 3, there's M. N is at 0, negative 1, there's N. And O is at 6, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1, there's O. Okay, so let me go ahead and just draw in my triangle. Draw my triangle. Okay, yeah, there it is. Now. I'm looking for the circumcenter. So I, I don't remember what a circumcenter is, but you're right. We're just going to look at the board and see, okay, Cir perpendicular bisectors to the sides, to the sides, okay? So that means I'm going to find the middle of each side and draw a 90 degree angle. So that's not too hard. So well, I want to do this one first. That's the middle because that looks pretty easy. There's the middle of that side, right? I'm going to just draw it at 90. Okay, it won't go through the angle. It doesn't have to. So there it is. Okay. Find the middle of this side, which is right here. All right, that's the middle of the side. And I'm going to draw 90. And I pretty much have it, don't I? I already found the point of intersection. Middle of this side, draw at 90. Right there it is. Anyway, I have it. I have it. It's right there is my circumcenter. And that's three, zero. Looks like it's at 3, 1. At 3, oh. 1. You don't have to do this, but I will, because what is the circumcenter? Well, it allows us to draw a circle around the triangle. And you don't have to do this, but I mean, the circumcenter has a value. It really does. The value is that I can draw a circle around the triangle, and that would be the center of my circle. Again, you don't have to do this, but I will. Well, you know, in some fields, Cody, like if you're a machinist, right, or an engineer, you might need to know how to get that. There it is. Isn't that cool? Okay, let's do, yes. Wait, 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 you've got to wait your turn. Yes. So for the orange line that's kind of going diagonal. Yeah, that one right there. Great question. Really good question. So 
it's got to be perpendicular, so it has to have the opposite slope. So this slope seems to be down 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So down 4 over 6, same thing as down 2 over 3. You with me, Bijou? So the slope of this line right here is going to be down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3. So that means its perpendicular slope would have to be up 3 over 2. So I went 3, 2, and got it. Does that make sense? Because if it's perpendicular, it should have the opposite slope. <coughs> really good um, question. Where do we know where to start? What do you mean where to start? Like on the y-axis? The, yeah. Right there? No, where do we know where to start the line? Oh, did, thank you. Thank you. It's in the middle. Yes, has to be. So look, so Bijou. Let's go back to this, okay? Yeah. So, when Cooper's in the middle, what's this word mean? Bisect. Goes right down the middle, right? Because it the middle. And that's what I did, Bijou, is I found the middle of this line and drew it at 90. I found the middle of this side and drew it at 90. And then I found the middle of this side and drew it at 90. Okay? So those words help, right? Okay, number five. Okay, I will. I'll wait for you. So technically, you could fit two of those triangles inside that circle. You could. Yeah, that's and right. They would, and they would all, all the points would be inside the circle. Yes, and that's why we call it a circumcenter because they're the inside. Side. The circle's on the outside, but the triangle's on the inside. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ben? I don't get where you, or I don't get how you Great. I counted. You ready? One, two, three, four. Half of that is two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Half of that is three. And then I kind of did down two over three, down two over three, which puts it right there, right? Or I can go down four over six, but what's half of down four over six? Down two over three, right? So you count that line first and then the other one. Sure. Yeah. Okay, number five. We want to find the centroid. Well, let's graph it first, okay, my centroid, all right, and we're going to graph it, okay, I need a centroid, and let's see, x is at 2, 1, there's x, y is at 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then Z is at 8, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3. Okay, there it is. There's, there is Z. Okay, let me connect the dots, right? Okay, we're going to connect the dots. Try and do a really good job. Make it nice and neat. Okay. And try and do a really good job so it's nice and neat. Okay, now again, I don't know what a centroid is, but if I look at the board, it deals with medians, right? Deals with medians. So if I need a median, okay, I need medians. And medians are finding the midpoint and drawing it from the angle. So the middle of this, of course, I can show you how I got this. I know that the middle is right here. That's the median. And hopefully that seems obvious why that's the middle. But you can count it, right? Up one, two, three. three. Yeah, up one over three. So that's got to be the middle, right? So my first median would be right there. Okay, there's my first median. Okay. My second median, let's see, I can count this one. This one's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. 3, 5. Half of 3, 5 would be 1 and a half, 2 and a half, which puts me right there. Do you want to count that again? Okay, I'll count it again. Ready? So to get from Y to Z, I go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I went 3, then 5. But if I take half that journey, wouldn't that put me in the middle? So 3, 5, let's take half that journey, would be a 1 and a half and a 2 and a half. There's the, the middle of that line segment. So, draw it in. It looks like I've already got it. 
looks like the point is right there, but I'll double check. That looks like it because I'll get the third line in a second, right? This one is going to be from, from X to Y. I make a count. I'll go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven over one, two, three. So I went up seven over three. That's my full journey, up seven over three. So let's take half that journey. We should find the middle. So so going up seven over three, I go one, two, three and a half, and over one, two, let's see, seven, three, three and a half, one and a half. There's my middle right there, kind of where I thought it would be. And if I draw in my other median, sure enough, we've already found our centroid. It's right there, right? Okay, now, what's the coordinate of that? Coordinate of that is going to be at one, two, three, four, five, one, two, five, two. Okay. Now, what makes the centroid special is the fact it divides it into thirds. Mr. Davis, it's at five, four. Um, yeah, Cooper, you're right. Yeah. Thank you. You're right. Yeah. Thank you. Five, four. Definitely. Okay. Um, and then number six. Okay. So six is going to be a line segment. So six is grab the line segment. We're not drawing a triangle. We're going to draw a line, a line segment, okay? So on six, we'll put six down here. Draw my triangle in. Not my triangle. Draw my line segment. Here's my y-axis and my x-axis, right? And let's see what I got. So I've got a at negative five. One, two, three, four, five, and five. One, two. Three, four, five. Okay, five. So five, negative five, five. There's point A. Point B is at eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then three. One, two, three. Count that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three. There's B. Okay, let me draw in my line segment. Okay. Now line segment, Ben. A line segment has no arrows, no arrows, because a line segment is only a piece of a line, right? Which means we could find the middle of this, right? Yeah. So if we want a perpendicular bisector, first let's look at the word bisector. So what I know about a bisector is it's got to be in the middle. So the easiest way to do this is just to count. So I'm going to count from A to B, down one, two, one, two, three, so I'm going down two. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay? So if I count down to and over thirteen, then the midpoint's gotta be halfway, right? Or one and then six and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six and a half. Right there is the midpoint, okay? Right there's the midpoint, okay? Now the slope of this line, AB, the slope of AB was down 2 over 13, right? That's the slope. Now think about that. That's the slope. It's down 2 over 13. That's the slope of that line of AB. So if I've got a perpendicular line, it's got to have the opposite slope. So what I need is the opposite <coughs> slope. Okay. Opposite slope. Over down two over it's going to be slope. up 13 over 2. Ben, watch. Down 2 over 13. That's a negative 2, okay? Down 2 over 13. I just counted it, right? Yeah, no, yeah. So that means the opposite slope would be 13 over 2, so that the line I'm looking for would look like this, right? See where my pencil is? It looked like that, because that'd make it perpendicular, right? So here's what I know. If I have an equation, my answer is going to be at least this, y equals 13 over 2x, but it's going to intersect somewhere way down here, isn't it? So let's count it. Cody, question. Well, couldn't it intersect at different points depending on where you start it because it doesn't specify what point it has to go through? Bisector has to go through the midpoint. <coughs> has to go through the midpoint, okay? So bisector or midpoint, okay? Does that make sense? So it's got to go through the midpoint because if it's bisecting, it's cut in half. Okay, so watch this. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk it. I'm going to take a journey. So
So from this midpoint, I want to go up 13. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and over 2, 1, 2. Okay? It's way up there, right? Now the other one's going to be down, so let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and over 1, 2. Okay? And then if I draw in my line, if I draw my line, I need a bigger ruler. I need a bigger ruler. If I draw my line, I'm going to get the perpendicular bisector, okay? So I'm going to draw my line right there. Let's see what I get. Yes, it is. So it crosses right there, doesn't it? It crosses right there. Okay, that's my y intercept, okay? See how the line cross right there? That's my y intercept, which is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. So I have my answer. y equals 13 over 2x minus 5. That's the equation of the perpendicular bisector. Now, this is probably the hardest question on the test, okay? Right? Because you have to know several things. You need to be able to graph the first line. We can do that. You need to figure out the midpoint. So you need to find the midpoint. So let's write some things down so you guys don't so you guys know how to do this. So I needed to graph the line, then I had to find the midpoint, okay? I had to find the midpoint. Once I found the midpoint, and for me the easiest way to find the midpoint is just count it. Take a journey. Down two over thirteen. Take a journey from here to here. Down two over thirteen. Half that journey would be down one over six and a half, right? That would give me the midpoint, okay? Then I needed to find the slope, okay? I need to find the slope of A B. So once I got the slope of AB, I can then find that opposite slope, right? Find the opposite slope. I graphed my bisector through the midpoint. And then the last thing I did is I came up with the y-intercept to find my equation. Because the equation is the answer, okay? Hopefully you can do that tomorrow or Monday. Okay, let's do 7, okay? All right, I'll do seven on the paper, okay? Okay, seven's easy. You guys are going to like seven, okay? So you ready? Centroid, okay? So if I go over to the board, centroid, okay, it cuts it into thirds. So here's what I know. If DE is four, then this is four, and this is also four, right? Because it cuts it into thirds. So if this is four, then this would be 4 and this is 4. Remember how we did this yesterday? Cuts it into thirds. So if I need to find C, D, C, D is 8, right? And C, E is 12. That should be easy tomorrow, right? You just have to remember that if it's a centroid, it cuts it into thirds. Want me to show that one more time? Yeah. Okay. So this was 4. D is 4, right? So... What we saw, Bijou, is that if this is 4, then this is going to be two of those. 4, another 4, and another 4. So then... So the short side... This one's always twice as long as that one. Oh, and is it because if D and, like, half of C are perpendicular, then that means that D is 4? Yeah. Nope. Not perpendicular, but let me say it again, okay? Shh, shh, shh. If it's a centroid... Boys, stop talking. If it's a centroid then what happens is this piece is twice as long as that. Okay. Always. This piece. And so what I did is I took my 4, and I made sure that's a 4, and that's a 4. Yeah. So I get three parts, 4, 4, and 4. Okay, once I get that, and this length is obviously 8, isn't it? Yeah. And then the whole thing is obviously 12. Yeah, Right, so let's write that down, that DC <laughs> is twice as big as ED. How is that? DC is twice as big as ED, and that should help quite a bit, right? So if this is 4, that's got to be 8. Then the whole thing together has to be 12. You add them all up, right? Okay. Big. Twice as big. So, okay. Okay. I'll turn the page in a second. All right, here we go. All right, so here comes the easy part, hopefully. 
Okay, we're going to bisect. Got my compass. And I need to see your construction. I absolutely need to see all of the little marks. Okay, I need to see the, remember? And got to see this. Got to see that and that, right? And I need to see this. And if I don't see those marks, if I don't see those marks, right? Let me do it again. Let me do it again. So you got to go, right? See it? So it's got to be at least bigger, the compass than half. It's got to at least be bigger than half. Does that make sense? Wait, but how do we know how big, or is it just kind of... It doesn't matter. And then it'll intersect it. Right, it won't matter. It's just so I, as long as you get two arcs right. here and really two arcs here. looking for the center point of those. Right, right. And I did the same thing. Right? So I absolutely need to see this, and then I need to see your line, which is your bisector. Okay, got to see that. And put a little 90 degrees there because it is a perpendicular bisect. Okay, Brian. Okay. All right. Everybody got that? Okay. I'll wait for you. Okay. So I need to see the dashes, the arcs here, and the arcs here. Draw your bisector in and make your night. Okay. I have to see this Monday. Okay. If you don't have all of those pieces, you'll miss it. Okay. It's a construction. There you go. Yeah. And then just draw it in. Yeah. Take your ruler, draw it in. Okay. Nice job, Brian. And then put your 90, put your 90 there because it is at 90. Okay. That's all you have to do. That's it. Isn't that easy? That's it. That's it. Isn't that easy? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You ready for the angle bisector? Okay. All right, give me thumbs up when you're ready. Be sure you're still working on it, right? Yep, yep. Okay. I like it. That's a good spot for you. That's it. We're done with we're, we're done with that one. That's it. It is a perpendicular 90 degrees bisector, cut in half. Now, we could say that AM... AM is equal to MB, right? Because it's a bisector. Cut in half. Boys. Now, let's slide it up, okay? Let's do an angle bisector. So to do an angle bisector, you're going to need to do this, okay? And then the compass can be any length. You just need to do this, okay? Okay. Any length, yeah, any length. In fact, let me go ahead and erase because it, it looks like I got two lines there. I don't want two lines. Well, yeah, as long as it's not too big, right? So about half. Sure, sure, about half. Okay, perfect. That looks awesome. Now what we did is we made two points here, x and y. Okay, we made two points here, x and y. Okay, so we made two points, x and y. What I need is a point because I want to bisect the angle. So I need a point on the inside. I need a point on the inside which will be in the middle. So I take my compass again, put it on X, and I do my little on the inside. See? My little I move my hand. Okay, I just did that. See, I did that. All right, and then we have to go from those points. And then I go back to Y and I'll do the same thing. So I'm doing it on X, and then I'll go to Y. I'll do the same thing on Y. 